Welcome to another episode of Value Talks with your host, Travis Tassett. This is your host, Travis Tassett, and I'm sitting down again with Dan Tassett, visionary, entrepreneur, chairman, CEO, slash, Dan, we should just probably call you slash with all the different hats that you wear. But welcome, Dan, to the show today. Thank you, Travis. Glad to be here again. So I want to do a recap for some of our listeners and those that have had have listened to previous podcasts, we've kind of, you know, talked about purpose and culture and, um, you know, values and some of the declarations we make as an organization. And um, we had John Palumbo as a guest, uh, guest on a couple of podcasts, and he talked about high performing culture and high performing organizations and uh, the balanced scorecard approach. Um, do you want to give a quick review or anything on the... Yes, I'd be glad to, Travis. I'm, I'm really uh, really uh, proud of the way that we've these podcasts have come together, so I really appreciate the work that you've done. I think if people haven't listened to all of them and have only recently started to join us for podcasts, I would really ask them to go back and listen to all of them. They're about 30 minutes each, and you know it's really about the timing of a nice walk or a jog or something. Try to multitask and try to get a benefit of something, not only physical, but mental. There's a lot of different ways to do that while drive time. But you know, we started out with purpose and, and vision mission, and, and then we moved quickly into, um, you know, as you said, John did a guest podcast on high-performing organizations, and then we've kind of followed, continue to go down through innovation and so on. So it's been really good, really good information. I've got a lot of positive feedback. I would like to continue to ask our, you know, listeners to these, that they would forward these to other people so that we can continue to expand and broaden our listening base, particularly inside of our own organization. So Mm -hmm. if there are um, administrators of CEOs of different companies that we have an equity interest in, uh, that you would engage them to see if we can't get them to participate in listening to these podcasts. I think they're really valuable. But to answer your question, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that John talked about in uh, the, you know, a high-performing organization is that the company needs to have a value system, values. It needs to have guiding principles. And it also needs to have leadership tenants. And, you know, when we talked about, you know, some of the companies that we own, in particular Value Health, New Health, and some of those that the the – the value system were, you know, which we use now quite often on some of our um, closures of things that we do. We care, we learn, we have fun, we get results. Some of our guiding principles. But what I wanted to talk about today, I think you wanted to talk about, invited me to again, was to talk about the leadership tenants Absolutely. that we have. And uh, in particular, just a couple of those leadership tenants. So, Which ones do you want to focus on today? You want to talk about Trust. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought we could just brainstorm a little bit about uh, trust and what what that looks like, and and we'll probably get into you know how do you um, keep trust and if you have it, and how do you gain it if you don't have it. Um, so I think that's uh, that's a topic that uh, we need we need to talk about. So thank you. Yeah. So how does trust tie in with some of the the values that we've been we've been speaking about, um, you know, like we care, how does caring and trust, how do you see those, those tied, tied together? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because, you know, you can, I don't want to get too corny here or too personal or anything, but, but I really see caring about somebody, uh, about an employee and loving that person is really almost this one and the same thing. And it, it just, you know, that is a, um, you know, core value that we have, that we ha- we care, we learn, we have fun, we get results, core mm-hmm. value system of, 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 of our organizations. And to me, caring comes after trust. And if you have trust and you've been able to maintain trust, uh, then, you know, that has to be built on truth. Um, you build trust on truth. And again, Truth to me is the same thing as being authentic, being real, um, and and then, but truth is only present when integrity exists. So in a kind of a strange way, you can't really care about people, you can't really love people, you can't really care about your employees and demonstrate that unless the solid you're on a solid foundation of integrity. Um, now, if if you take that same continuum. Caring comes after trust, but trust doesn't exist. How do you create trust? How do you build trust? Well, there's a number of different ways to do that. 
You have to communicate. You have to over-communicate. You have to be completely transparent about what's going on inside your organization, um, what's happening. And how you do that is very specific and it's very, um, very purposeful. And then after you build that, tra- from that transparency, now you've able to restore, excuse me, restore or build trust. And, and you know, that's built again, continuing on truth and uh, authenticity, on being real. Um, then, you know, uh, then that you're able to go back to care. Uh, and that's how we kind of tie our value system into leadership tenets of trust and transparency. So you talked about integrity. I mean, a lot of people throw that word around, um, and I'm sure different people have different meanings, but what does it mean for you to, to have integrity? And how does that tie in, again, to, into, into trust? It, again, there's, a, well, as you said, a lot of different definitions for it. And, but but it, for me, it all boils down to a couple of things. Um, integrity is who you are and what you do at the core when nobody's around and nobody's watching, nobody's listening. How do you th- look at life? How do you, th- how do you look at yourself? How do you look at the world around you? You know, you have to first have integrity with yourself. And so what was the, um, the, some, I don't remember who said it, but the, the big, the worst deception in the world is self-deception. Yeah. And so you have to first be, have integrity with yourself, you know, know who you are, what you do, what, and speak truth to yourself. And then, and then you speak truth to everybody else and you're real, you're authentic, you're down to your, down to the core of who you are. And so integrity to me is just making sure number one, you have integrity with yourself and then you know who you are, you're truthful with everybody around you. Complete, complete, authentic, authentic person. That, that's integrity. You, you talked also about being real. And I think there is kind of this balance between, you know, wanting to be right and wanting to be real. And, and what are your thoughts on that? I mean, can, uh, well, can we be too real sometimes? Well, it, it you can be I believe you can be too transparent. I don't think that, you know, depending on the circumstance, you don't share everything with everybody. You know, if you, you know, every personal item or personal little thing that you can, yeah, I think you can be, I don't think you can be too real, but you can, you can be, you can say too much and you can be too, uh, too personal, too transparent with people. And we can talk more about what that means, but I I just fundamentally over the last, um, long time 40 years i think that i've learned in business is that people don't follow a company they do not follow an organization they follow people they follow another person and and they'll follow people that don't need to be right all the time they'll follow people who are real Mm-hmm. Way before they'll follow somebody who's perfect all the time and always, always right. I, I just believe that that people love a leader who's authentic and who who who, who says the bad with the good. Um, I think truth motivates. Truth calms. I don't care if it's bad news. If you tell it to your organization, and they'll follow you through anything. And, We've had that happen in our organization. We've had some really bad things happen uh, to me personally, to us as an organization. But boy, what you put people, you get in front of people, and you're authentic and you're real and you're truthful. Uh, it's it's incredible how people will follow that type of a leader. So I just encourage everybody uh, who's listening to the podcast and we're all can be in a leadership position. Is it's much more important to be real than it is to be right. Yeah, I mean we've said in a lot of our leadership training. That we've that we've done in our organizations that you know weak leaders want to be right, and strong leaders want results. Right. And what do you want? Do you want results or do you want to be right? And you know that's a choice that I think all of us have to make. Um, so how does this authenticity, this being real, this integrity um, play into you know giving coaching and giving feedback? What what are your thoughts on 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 that? Well, there's a there's a lot around that. You know, I it, it's just you know I love the, I love the idea of saying that I am absolutely um, 
ruthlessly honest um, and that but I'm wise about it so I think that and with that I think if you if you start that being the basic premise for what you know what you do um, then I think from that you can you can come along so it, so if you think about that I'm going to be I'm going to be honest, but I'm going to be wise. What are you wise? And so that to me, why wisdom says, okay, when do I be truthful? When do I be transparent? When do I say things that, that need to be said? Who do I say it to? What's the timing of it? How much do I say? Um, I think that's, uh, wisdom with honesty without wisdom, I think is, you're, is a, is a, could be a potential failure for disaster. So I think you have to be wise about what you do. Well, it's even research has shown that when someone expresses anger, most people think that, you know, it's cathartic to, to say that and express it, but it actually makes you more angry through the expression of, of anger. So there's certainly a time and a place for everything. But how does someone modulate that? How do they make the determination based on, um, you know, how, I, how much do I share? When do I share it? With whom do I share it? What? How does a leader kind of navigate and, and modulate that with themselves and yeah. with other people? Yeah, good question. So the guiding premise for me is there, there's a couple up front. Number one, I don't think you should ever coach, give feedback, apply criticism to anybody ever if it's hurtful. It should always meant to build up, right? So a lot of people use the term constructive criticism. I don't care what you call it. But if you're going to do something, say something, and it doesn't ultimately build someone up, then you should not say it, period, end of discussion. And so that's, that's my rule number one. Rule number two for me is, is that um, I don't coach anybody or give criticism to anybody unless I'm asked for it. I just don't think it's a. I just don't think it's something that you should do unless they are, you know, an employee that reports to you, or your children who you know are reliant on you for boundaries and guidance. Then that's a different story. But just somebody who's a peer or somebody that's a friend and they don't ask for feedback, criticism. I, I just think you got to be really careful about that. So that's probably the guiding, a couple guiding principles just right out of the gate. So not can't be hurtful. It's got to build up, uh, and you have to be um, you have to be requested unless, of course, they're uh, report to you. Yeah, so I sometimes call that unsolicited advice, and it just yeah. it just I think it's the number one or one of the top errors that I think I see in a lot of leaders make is giving that advice when it hasn't been or that feedback when it hasn't been requested because right. if someone's not in the right state of mind. Um, they, they won't hear it, right? In one ear, out the other. So, In fact, you may do more harm than good. Right. Okay. And again, it comes Often down to results. Right. So let's circle back for a minute and go back to what you said earlier about, you know, being honest, being ruthlessly honest, but being wise at the same time. And, um, you know, just talk a little bit more about wisdom and what that means and how do you decide? Who do you share it with? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's... A there's probably three things. It's who do you share it with? What do you share? And when do you share it? Okay, <laughs> let's start with the who. The who. Well, number one is generally you would say, I I'm giving you criticism, coaching, feedback. I'm being honest with you, ruthlessly honest with you. Um, wisdom says, I'm telling this person something. Can they, can they affect outcomes? Can they affect change? Can they do anything about Can it? Can they do anything about it? I mean, that, that's number one. I mean, I, you know, why am I, you know, they're saying, why are you talking to me? I can't do anything about this. And so first is being able to connect outcome to the person you're giving feedback and coaching to. Um, I mean, you, you equate it to a f uh, football team and you're talking to about – uh, a lineman, how to run a, a good uh, pass route. I mean, well, he's going to look at you like you're crazy. I don't run ball. Why are you talking to me about this? And, you know, so, right, it'd be logical you wouldn't do that. And that may seem like, you know, that is like uh, obvious, but, I mean, you, you'd be surprised. I think, the, and the second thing is, um, on the who side, is 
you know, uh, can they be trusted? I mean, can, you know, d just because they're, you know, a, um, an employee, maybe considered a good employee, but sometimes they have a hard time, you know, you know, you have to discern through wisdom whether or not they can be trusted with this information, whether it's not ready to spread internally yet, you're not ready to communicate with everybody yet. So I think you got to think, think about that. And, um, so that brings in the when component, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, the when is the timing is really important. I mean, you don't, I don't think it's a good thing to bring bad news to the organization, even if it is a need to know and those that can impact change first thing at eight o'clock on a Monday morning. I mean, it's just not wise to do that. There's probably a better timing for that, right? Uh, Friday at four o'clock, maybe? Friday at four o'clock or something. <laughs> but, I mean, kidding. there's my point. That's is, probably not a good time either. But the Timing is, is really, you know, important on, on how you do that. And I think the, the third thing is, is what you're saying. You know, I, I, whenever we speak, whenever we communicate, in order to build trust, if trust doesn't already exist, and even to maintain trust, we should always tell the truth, right? Ruthlessly honest. Um, but just because, because something is true does not mean it needs to be said. Uh, I couldn't agree more. So this whole idea is transparency, in my opinion, is not an all or nothing. And so not only who you say it to, when you say it, but what you say obviously needs to be truthful, but it may, you know, you may need to, um, you may need to limit how much uh, you actually, truth you actually do tell. So I think it's just critically important. So what do you mean by that? I mean, I mean say a little more about that, that it's transparency, honesty, it, it isn't all or nothing. Well, and again, you could take all kinds of different circumstances to it. You could say, you know, I have, look, if you have, let's say I have a direct report, I have an employee, somebody who's a leader and they have a, a, a direct report, and the direct report is really making progress, but um, you've been coaching them hard. You've been really, and they've been improving, but they may be a little bit, um, they may be a little bit fragile if you push too much more at any one given time, making good progress. But, you know, I got one more, one more little thing this week I'd like to coach them on. I actually have six things, but do I throw all six things and, and, and um, worry about um, them completely imploding because you threw too much at them at one time? So I think being wise is saying, you know what, I'm just going to bring up this one thing today, even though I have five other things that are completely uh, brutally truthful, honest, um, but I'm not, I don't believe they can handle all those, those other five things. I'm just going to bring up one of them right now to see whether I can get them to, to continue to, uh, to move in the right direction. Um, and so I just, you just have to, again, wisdom comes with that, with knowing people, knowing who they are. Um, just because it's the truth doesn't mean it needs to be said, at least not right now. And maybe never, you just, you, you don't know. So you got to kind of judge, um, you know, people and that's, where wisdom comes from. If you've done it too many enough times, you'll know when to when to pull back just a little bit. Um, I'm sure some of that comes with experience and time, right? Sure. Yeah, that's where wisdom, more than anything, is experience and time, <laughs> and and a lot of failure and probably some yeah. pain and suffering. So, let's see. so let's talk about emotions and how emotions come into the equation of, you know, I talked a little bit earlier about, at, about anger and expressing anger sometimes will make you more angry. Um, is it good to be emotionally charged, positive or negative when, when you're giving feedback, when you're being real with other people? How do you, how do you see emotions come into the fold? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's, again, it comes from the timing of when probably more than anything. Um, if you, first of all, I think it's really unwise, um, to go into any coaching session or any constructive criticism session, um, whether it is solicited 
or whether it's with a direct report or have you with a company because you're the CEO of the company or the administrative facility or whatever it might be, you're in a leadership position, even your own family, your own children. It's really unwise to go into that when you're emotionally uh, upset. Um, if you're enthusiastic uh, in a positive way, different story. Perfect but if, time. Yeah. But Do you think it's a good time when you're sure, positive? I, yeah. I mean, I, I think when, when you're emotionally charged because you're enthusiastic about – um, the positives of the week or the positives of the previous week and and you've just had a bunch of successes and and uh, you've just had a big win and you want to come into the locker room and man you want to really talk about what a great time there's no no better time because people are enthusiastic and and they've just chalked up a win and they're really ready to ready to ready to go and hear the next what's going on because it's contagious right <clears throat> right yeah do you ever find yourself dialing down your excitement no no i don't it, it unless i just need to dial it down to be enthusiastic unless to be articulate uh to be able to explain what i'm saying um but again um you know it it just it's a matter of being uh real and um now people might say okay so when don't you when is bad timing well when you're really angry you're really upset and something's really, I just don't think that's a great time to go, you know, to go out and start to uh, start to give criticism. Because I think that the emotional wake that you might leave, uh -huh. or it impairs your, um, your ability to be a good coach, to be, uh, to be a good leader. And I think you should always, when you feel that emotional charge in an angry way, I think that negative um, is going to diminish your, you as a leader. Even though it may be real for you at the time, what's, what's even more real, uh, that you're able to recognize that I might not be at my best right now because I'm so upset and so angry. Um, and it's, I think it's even okay to be able to, when you do provide the feedback, whether it's an a whole organization, a whole department, or one person, to be able to say, I was going to do this two days ago, but I was so angry and so upset, I thought I might really do a bad job of providing coaching here. Um, so I opted to wait a day or two until I calmed down. That's about as authentic as you can get. And now you're in a place where you've really thought through it. You can really provide great leadership to people. Um, so I just really encourage everybody when, when emotions are high in a negative way, then probably need to push the pause button. Uh, not a good time to provide a coaching session. I mean, this comes back to the wisdom part of the timing, right? Right. And, and when it's appropriate and, and certainly when it's not mm -hmm. sometimes. So, Dan, let's talk for a minute about situations in where there's a, an organization that lacks trust or the culture of the organization has a very low amount of trust. What do you do? How do you, how do you build that trust other than, you know, being in honest and real and, right. you know, being wise right. and when you share it and how you share it? What, what are your general thoughts on how do you build trust when it seems to be deficient? Or Well, um, two things. Primarily, number one, you have to make sure that you have a strong immune system to the lack of trust, which can, can um, completely eat away at your entire organization. And I've, I've podcast and blogged on this before, is that um, trust is the immune system of an organization. So um, just like the immune system of your body, um, if you... If you catch a cold, your immune system fights that cold off rather than having that cold destroy your entire body. So in, in the physical health, you, you, if you are susceptible to cold and it erodes away at your health, you may always make sure you've got a strong immune system. How do you do that? Good rest, good exercise. The, the nutrition. Nutrition, all of those kinds of things builds a strong immune system so that when little bad things happen, it doesn't destroy your whole body. Well, same is true in an organization. If you have problems, and you will, every organization will have problems, and it starts eroding the, the immune system, which is trust. The question is, how do you build that trust? And so there's, there's, there's two ways. One of them is to make sure that you eliminate all um, triangulation, all water fountain talk, not times called backstabbing or whatever it might be, delivering the message to the wrong mailbox. You're talking about 
um, Susie and Mary report to you and Susie comes to talk to you about Mary and you should immediately as a leader say, well, have you talked to Mary about this problem? And you can't, Mary can't solve the problem. We can't fix it unless Mary's in the room. Let me go get Mary, Susie, and then you can tell both Mary and me what the problem is. Um, so she may not even be aware of the not problem. Aware. So, so build, rebuild your immune system, build trust by stopping the water fountain talk, triangulation in the organization. That's number one. Number two, communication um, and transparent communication. And so you could restore. If you have a strong immune system, you have strong trust in an organization. Frankly, I don't think you need transparent. And the more tr- the stronger the trust is, the less communication, the less transparency you need. And conversely, the less trust you have, the more communication. You have to over-communicate. You have to overly be transparent uh, in everything that you're doing. So to me, is is just making sure that, um, that you do everything and anything you can to communicate uh, to your organization. And, and to me, that transparency in the best and the simplest form is you answer questions before they're ever asked. And that's the way I try to look at communication inside of an organization. I try what do you to mean you a, answer questions before they're ever asked? Well, I'm trying to anticipate. If I were to sit in a room, okay. we were completely real, and, what, and I said to my employees, we're going to have a question and answer session. Um, I, what would they ask me? And so what I try to think of, and, and, and first of all, you're going to have a difficult time getting people to ask because it's especially in a group setting because they won't want to be embarrassed. They won't be embarrassed by the question. Should they already have known? Should they even be asking? Is it even appropriate to ask? They don't know all those things. So what I try to do is say, if there weren't those impediments to the questions, what would their questions be? And then try to be completely transparent and communicate the answer to what I anticipate their questions would have been if they would have asked them way in advance of them even asking. And frankly, if you can communicate them way in advance of them even thinking about it, um, I th- then I think you're, you're building trust. Uh, you're creating communi- transparent communications and you're building trust because you're telling them in advance of them even thinking about it. So I often, uh, often, um, hear people get frustrated as a leader. And it drives me crazy because they're like, and, and frankly, I learned this a long time ago and it drove me crazy. And, but I, I'm embarrassed to even say that I, was, I did this a lot and still fall into the street. Why, why are people not doing what I want them to do? Why are they not you know, acting like I would act or I would want them to act? Why are they not doing well, I think the answer is because they're not thinking like you think. They don't know what you know. <laughs> they don't know what you know. So the purpose of transparent communication is not only to build trust, but it's to get them to think and act what you would like to see them think and act. And you, the only way to do that is to help them see what you see. And so if I can help them see what I see, they'll think like I think, and then they'll act like we would want them to act. And we'll get the performance of a high-performing organization. It's just, it's just that simple. Now, sound simple, hard to do. You know, just what you said a moment ago reminds me of the last employee forum of Value Health and New Health. And, you know, you did a Q&A session up there with uh, – John Palumbo and I think Carl King was up there for for some of the time and I was just amazed that you know fielding questions probably for almost an hour of of the amount of questions that you got from the audience and I think that only happened because of the amount of trust that we have within the organization um years back I can remember where you know people were hesitant to even ask questions so I just think that's a I think that's a good example of, of having a culture of, of trust and transparency. And just want to thank you for bringing that to our, our organizations. Yeah, I think the, the closing, I think we're working up on 30 minutes here probably, aren't we, Travis? So I, I just, again, I just want to leave, leave people and particularly those inside of our organization who may be li- listening to this podcast is really please share the podcast with others uh, and others even outside the organization. But... I just want to leave them with, you know, caring 
for your fellow worker, caring for your family, loving your fellow worker, your, your, it 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 comes after trust, and trust comes after truth, and truth is a result of the ultimate integrity and being uh, real inside of an organization, be authentic. And I'll just say it again: I think people follow people, and they'll follow people who are authentic, who are real, way before they'll follow people who are always right. You're going to edit here? Don't just tell the... Yeah, yeah. close with that. I think that's powerful. So, so you can cut out everything George has said. said. So um, if people will, you know, the, the caring part and the love part that comes from trust and truth and integrity um, is I think that you cannot just tell the truth and have integrity. You actually, you actually have to, it has to become who you are and it has to be what you do. I, it just, it's not just, I tell the truth. No, you are truth. It is what I do. I am real. I am authentic, and I, every bit about me uh, is is truth. And it just becomes an innate part of who you are. And if that's not who you are as a leader, for those leaders that are listening, just encourage you. Uh, don't just tell the truth. Let it become who you are. Enough said. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate yeah, your time thank today. You, Travis. Thank you for listening to another episode of Value Talks. Please subscribe and be sure to leave a review.